live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Hydro Tasmania executives have told how the termination of an agreement with BassLink had no bearing on its financial status. The operation's under the spotlight as a week of government business scrutinies wrapped up. It's been a high voltage year in the energy market, but Hydro Tasmania claims it hasn't been shocked, even with the BassLink service agreement terminated. It was neither advantaged or disadvantaging Hydro Tasmania. But it could face energy troubles next year. The independent regulator's market watch says there's no extra power available for the first half next year. We see no capacity shortfall in the sense that there will be a, um, a lack of energy available for Tasmanian consumers. We we are managing our storages to those levels. Saying there is some availability, but not how much. Outside, hydro workers rallied over paying conditions. The staff at Hydro are deeply concerned about talent, um, skilled professionals and technical staff um, leaving the state. The company has faced ongoing action this year. Our ministerial charter requires that we're cognisant of the state wages policy, so that's a factor that does feed into mm. our discussions. TAS Networks is reducing its workforce by a quarter over the next year. Vacancy controls and voluntary redundancies to be utilised. We are working through this layer by layer through our business. Obviously, as a critical service provider, we're very mindful that we have responsibilities to the community. Tasmanians gagged by administration administrative and guardianship orders could soon be allowed to tell their stories. But I have expressed the view to my department uh, to look at that. The move, one long advocated for. Public trustee CEO Todd Kennedy says a lack of resources has contributed to poor client communication. I don't think that's a cultural thing, it's more around appropriately resourcing our people and getting the caseloads down so we can be more responsive. The final day of GBE is bringing the parliamentary year to a close. The public sector wage battle is nearing a resolution. For more, we're joined by state political reporter Josh Duggan. Good evening to you, Josh. Now, what have unions said about the latest offer? Kim, it's been well received and it will now go to members for a vote. The health, the education and the community and public sector unions among those doing so. This offer follows sector-wide strike action on November 9th that saw thousands of workers walk off the job. This offer includes pay rises of 3.5% in the first year, followed by 3% in the following two years, as well as cost, as cost of living boost to the base rate and more paid leave. Unions say they are disappointed it took strike action for this to be put forward. Government had continued to focus on wages only, which was and is a significant issue for workers. But in a number of areas, there are a set of conditions that are equally, if not more important, all industrial action will stop now as members vote on their deals. Kim? Well, five Tasmanians have lost their lives to COVID in the past week as cases continue to trend upwards with the state entering its fourth COVID wave. Just under 4,000 people have tested positive in the past seven days, an increase of 46% on the previous week. Two people are in intensive care. The government has announced state-run testing clinics will close at the end of January. PCR testing will, however, continue at GP clinics from February next year. Former Carlton boss Mark Maloof has been appointed as the chair of Stadiums Tasmania. Having also headed the Cardinia Park Trust, he says his experience in the sporting industry and government will serve him well as the organisation is formed. It's going to provide a level of expertise specific to stadiums. It'll provide economies of scale. It'll improve the economic welfare and welfare of the community in Tasmania. The rest of the board will be appointed soon. The new authority will manage Utah Stadium, Bell Reve Oval, Dial Park and the proposed Mac Point Stadium. Young minds have gathered in Launceston for the fourth Commissioner for Children and Young People Future Tasmania event. 60 ambassadors aged from 10 to 17 have joined local politicians and decision makers to raise their voice and share their views on issues ranging from climate change, mental health and education. A lot in the education system needs to be changed. I am a passionate advocate for Aboriginal history and truth telling. I'm a Pala woman of Truana, Cape Grand Island. And I think there's a lot that is still not being taught 
and it's crucial. If children know that when they stick their hand up to have a say, we will listen to them and we will believe what they tell us, then we will have a much safer Tasmania for all of our children. The aim of the event is to create child safe spaces, sparking discussion and consultation with industry leaders. One of the state's social enterprises has recognised the achievements of its staff at Blue Line Laundry's annual awards ceremony in Launceston. The presentation was held to mark the International Day of People with Disability tomorrow. So we all rally together to really create uh, equal economic participation through uh, employment choices. It's so good, everyone's so supportive, so cooperative, it's good to be here. More than a third of Blue Line's staff live with a disability, with another 35% coming from culturally diverse backgrounds. A Tasmanian victim survivor of sexual abuse has detailed her struggle to access support services after reporting her experience to police. A new integrated service is aiming to deliver coordinated care with hopes people will feel safer coming forward. Victim survivor Keely didn't know where to turn for help after she told police what happened to her. Once I left the police station, I wasn't actually informed of any services available to me in the Launceston area. The process to get help was so difficult she almost gave up. I got to a point where I was like, this is just too much. I can't keep running backwards and forwards to try and find someone to help me. New ARCH centres offer the promise of a single point of contact with support services and specially trained investigators. And what we hope that we create a safe and confident environment where victim survivors have the confidence to also report uh, their crimes to police. With reports of sexual assault doubling last year, the $15 million commitment is a welcome boost to the sector. It means that our staff are right there. Um, when somebody comes into an arch centre, we're able to provide that support. We won't have to go and chase someone and find someone to speak to when we are in our most vulnerable position. The state government announcing the CBD locations of both centres today in Victoria Street in Hobart and Cameron Street in Launceston. This is now the start of something new and victim survivors aren't going to have to suffer like I did. Arch program is expected to open from the middle of next year. Annie Green, 7, Tasmania News. Former North Melbourne AFL coach David Noble has found a new job, swapping a Sharon for the supercars by taking over as CEO of Dick Johnson Racing. The iconic motorsport team notes Noble's 20 years of experience in sports administration. The Tasmanian was unceremoniously sacked as Kangaroos coach in July. Cobra Hill Wines will bring the bubbles to this year's Taste of Summer as the official sparkling partner for the Food and Wine Festival. The Clover Hill Atrium will be a key feature of the event, overlooking the Sydney to Hobart finish line. We're creating a, a VIP sort of tasting masterclass experience with Inside the Marquee, so hopefully lots of, uh, lots of good education and good sparkling wine. The Taste has a strong reputation of showcasing exceptional Tasmanian produce and Clover Hill are one of the premier sparkling wine producers, not just in Tasmania but in Australia. The bubbles will begin pouring on December 27, the official start to this year's taste. Also on the festive front, southern Tasmanians are being encouraged to warm up their voices as the Christmas carols in Hobart return after a COVID hiatus. For some, it will be the first time they'll get to experience the events. What I see, I see children running around, they're excited, they're skipping, they're playing, they're singing, uh, their eyes are shining. Four community events are going ahead in the lead up to Christmas. Our other neighbourhood Christmas carols are really popular because they're easy for people to get to, uh, they're very local, they're very communi community driven. Carols at John Turnbull Park kick off festivities promising feature donkey rides and a visit from the Christmas Fairy next Saturday. Well, bouncing into the north, a Swisher Academy has opened its doors, aiming to inspire a new generation of basketball fans. The need for further facilities around the state is on the rise as the sport's popularity continues to soar. Bringing basketball back to the north, Swisher Hoops Academy has officially opened its sixth facility in the state, providing a new space for rising stars. It's fantastic. It's a great opportunity for Launceston. It's really, really exciting um, to have the you know, up-to-date machinery that's going to give kids you know, precise, accurate information on their shooting. 
Fish Shot Labs are a key feature of the facility which provide instantaneous feedback on player performance. The beauty of the Shot Lab is you can track your data, you can measure results. It tells you what your score is uh, in each of the areas but it also then gives you the percentage and then it gives you an opportunity to, to beat that. Benefiting basketball at the grassroots. There is a, a lack of training facilities and courts in the north um, so and with the increase in young children wanting to play basketball I think it's an ideal time and a good, great facility to help out with the demand on the courts. We grew at our local club level from four under 10 teams to 11 under 10 teams in the last 12 months, probably because of the jack jumpers. Spaces like this needed now more than ever, with Swisher already making plans for further expansion. Part of the, the broader vision for Launceston that additional to the, the shot labs, we'll be able to find a, a place to put down some, some further courts, which will help ease the pressure for, for local clubs and schools. Encouraging the younger generation to shoot hoops and shoot for the stars. McKenna Bailey, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmania is in deep trouble against South Australia at Blunston. Tim Ward took a screamer to end SA's first innings at 329 runs, but the Tigers were then rolled for just 149 against the lowly Redbacks. Matthew Wade went for a duck. A rare highlight came from a Jake Doran six. He and flicks it over. Mid-wickets for a six. He went on to top score with 42. South Australia is 4 for 111 in its second innings at Stumps on day two. The Redbacks lead by 291 runs. Seven of Tasmania's sharpest pool sharks have been called up for national duties in next year's world eight ball titles. Among them are Lily Meldrum and Fiona Plummer, who each broke new ground at the recent Australian Championships. Champion junior Lily Meldrum will soon pocket the experience of a lifetime. At just 14, she's been called up to Australia's senior eight ball squad. Even more remarkable, she was picked from her very first national titles at senior level. I've idolised them, so I've been watching them play since I was young and it was just so surreal to be playing alongside them for the first time. Lily admits to some anxiety on the senior stage. Luckily, her doubles partner, Fiona Plummer, nurtured her through the nerves. The team coming within a whisker of the doubles title. It ended up being a really good year for Tasmanians. So good, Plummer has been named vice-captain of the national side, which is heading to Morocco next year, an honour she last enjoyed on a trip to South Africa in 1997. To be recognised, you know, in that way, to take a team to a national and be a leader is, yeah, it's a great honour. Also enjoying that honour, Hobart's Greg Laurie, named as vice-captain of the Masters side after winning the Masters plate singles at the Nationals, although he was guilty of some friendly fire. Played my best games against some of my, our, my teammates, unfortunately. <laughs> So uh, we, we knocked each other out on the way. Despite being a veteran of the sport, Laurie says this year has been his best yet. The secret? Well, I've got a lot of time on my hands. I'm retired now. While for Lily, her journey at senior level is just beginning. The very first day I was so nervous and I couldn't stop shaking, but I managed to get my first win and that gave me some confidence for the rest of the tournament. A versatile team set to match any player of any generation. And with the Australian Open in full swing, tonight's Friday flashback has dug up a Tasmanian's titanic golfing battle in 1998. That year, Hobart's Matthew Goggin had the fight of his life at the Australian Masters, lifting him from local champion to a national household name. With a sound golfing pedigree from champion mum Lindy, Matthew Goggin's skills and composure saw him catapult to the top. His breakout coming in 1995 when he claimed the Tasmanian amateur title at Wynyard Seabrook Golf Club over local legend Peter Toogood. Goggin's 10 and 9 victory is one of the easiest in recent years. His work was cut out though when he engaged in one of his burgeoning career's biggest battles at the Australian Masters in Melbourne. That's a beautiful tee shot from Matthew Goggin down the left half of the fairway there. Known then as the Ericsson Masters, Goggin was in a fierce duel with Victorian Brad Hughes. The pair could hardly be split, the lead flipping hole to hole. Matt Goggin coming in from rather the tight side. He's hit it from left to right and cut it up. And is that going to break on? It is indeed. That's a glorious goal shot. But as the 18th drew near and a boisterous crowd had built behind the supercharged pair, the veteran Hughes pulled away. An amazing victory for the second time. Brad Hughes wins the Australian Masters. But Goggin had earned the golfing world's respect, ultimately finishing a fine runner-up on the national stage. Great performance.
completes a marvellous week for Matt Goggin. The result launched the then 23-year-old into golf's global realm to tours across Europe and America. Oh, good start from the Aussie. A career driving ahead after teeing off from one of golf's great events. Good evening. Hobart and Launceston reached 20 degrees today. Burnie 17 and Devonport 18. Oos and Bushy Park warmed up to 23. It was 22 in Grove. Flinders Island, Low Heads and Helens and Friendly Beaches 19 and Lyaweenie 17 degrees. Cloudy conditions over the north today but that partially cleared as the day progressed. Looking at the bigger picture and low cloud is over the east of New South Wales. A band of cloud with a cold front well to the south of WA and active cloud over the Coral Sea and the far north. Tomorrow a high positions over the Tasman Sea as a cold Cold front passes to our south, a trough slices through Western Australia to over the bite. Winds tending nor nor easterly, 15 to 20 knots ahead of a westerly change over southern waters in the afternoon and evening. Fairly strong down there too, a strong wind warning between South East Cape and Low Rocky Point. Saturday in Hobart, mostly sunny and 26 degrees, 24 for Medina, OK for Oatlands, 25 the maximum. Launceston reaching for 25 as well and partly cloudy, Devonport 20 and 22 the top for Liawini, sunny in the hills, 19 for Burnie, mostly sunny for Strawn, 22 the top and 21 for Marawar. St Helens, 23 and mostly sunny. Same for Swansea, 25 though and 24 the top for Orford. An extreme UV forecast for tomorrow reaching 11 on the scale. A fine start to Sunday, however later on we might see a shower over the south and west, a thunderstorm in the west too. Monday showers over most of the state as the winds turn southerly, a possible light shower for the central, south and southeast into Tuesday. Here's the, uh, the big island, sunny and warm in Perth, sunny and hot for Adelaide, Melbourne. Reaching 30 as well, partly cloudy weather in Sydney and a possible shower for Brisbane. Bit of cloud about, mostly cloudy in Hobart, it's 18. 18 in Launceston, Devonport, sunny as well and 16 degrees. Of course, Kim, I'll be seeing you very shortly at the bar for the 7 Tasmania Christmas party. Getting hard to get through all these instructions from the HR department though, but you've never taken notice of that, have you? And neither of you. You behave yourself this year, Murph. And that is all we have time for tonight. On behalf of the entire Seven Tasmania local news team, it's good night.